When it comes around, the left uh, fender flare would be damaged if you had a big contact like that. Well, and Jerry Vinto's car looked pretty clean down the yeah. right side. That's where you expect to see damage on him. Jamie, what have you found? Well, I have found Johnny O'Connell, who's made his way back to pit lane, debriefing with the team right now. Johnny, we see the truck on the flatbed. What happened from your seat? Yeah, this kind of stuff happens to, at Lime Rock all the time. You know, I got a. We had great Corvettes, you know, uh, I, you know, and sadly, uh, you know, uh, contact with somebody that really was, you know, might not have been, shouldn't have been out there. You know, uh, it, it's a shame, but uh, we'll try to fix it. I, I mean, we are pushing so hard with this Corvette, trying to get it back to the front. And, uh, you know, there's, Lime Rock always lends itself to a lot of contact, but this, you know, this, this is frustrating when you really get, you got a good car, you're moving it to the front and something like this happens. Disappointing day for Johnny O'Connell and the whole, whole Corvette racing team. Chris, who do you have? Well, Pat Long just jumped out of the flying lizard Porsche, and Pat, it is a literal street fight out there in these early, uh, early going to this race. But you've been doing a lot of stock car racing lately. Did that give you a bit of a warm up? <laughs> it's like short track racing out there right now. There's not any love lost between the different classes. I expected to have a little bit more help from the GTC guys, but uh, hey, you know they're making holes and they're creating them. So. It was tough to see uh, how many spins were in front of us. Luckily, we were to avoid all of them. We're not points racing today. We're racing for the win. With that, uh, we've got a great car. The thing is handling really, really well. We were pulling Pierre in there. Uh, we came in, we pitted, and we just left the 61 like they were sitting still. So that's a testament to these Flying Lizard guys. They work so very hard. It's hot out there. I told Yurik, you know, conserve your tires, but conserve yourself. Um, you know, FRS is my energy drink. It's working well today, but it's really, really hot. Saw so you jump a curve pretty big out there. Any damage to the car when you did that? No, a little bit of uh, damage to the relationship between Luke Hines and I would go back a w long way to Europe racing go-karts and he knew I was there. Craig had j Greg Pickett had just slid under him, but no, no damage so far. Maybe a little bit of toe here and there, but that's good short track racing at Lime Rock. Good stuff. I think one advantage that the Flying Lizard boys have, this is the car, the configuration they ran here last year. A lot of the other GT cars are coming with new stuff, so I think it's a big advantage with the rain out yesterday. Pagano back on the throttle. Here's who he had trouble already. Chris Dyson, who led early, problems for him. We saw the problems for the 23 GT Porsche as Simon Pagano takes the green. The rest of the guys who've run into a little trouble today. Talk about changes on cars. Remember the aero package on that number one, the HPD of uh, patrol race. Ooh, lock up there yeah. for 95. That's Andy Wallace behind the wheel there. The new aero package on the one car as you ride on board with Andy Wallace. It's the battle for second in the LMP Challenge category. There's a slower car right there, the team car actually, to the 99. Yeah, but these LMPC cars have carbon brakes, and if you don't keep any heat in them, Dorsey, there'll be nothing there, and then suddenly that heat gets in, and they'll lock up. Yeah, that's one of the quirks about it on the short track like this. You see Andy now trapped behind the team car. He'll be starting to get uh, his blood pressure up shortly. And Andy Wallace had had the lead in LMP Challenge, so the lead has changed hands as Wallace tries to work his way around the slower 36, and here comes the GT. Leaders right there, the two BMWs, the 90 of Dirk Mueller in front, and then the Tommy Miller. Think about this, our overall leader has not seen pit lane yet today, so this is a big strategy call by the Highcroft boys, 54 minutes in, but the BMWs looking good. They didn't take that last yellow, but I still think they'll be able to see this race on just one more stop, and everyone else will need to visit pit lane as well. I hate to say it, but this is the typical line rock. I mean, thing, we said at the beginning of the show, it's just non-stop action. When you're racing these races, it seems like cars are coming at you from everywhere. Right now, the BMW's out in front of GT. Dirk Mueller leading over Tommy Milner, but the problems for the Corvette, we've chronicled them well. I know all the cars run a rev limiter. I don't think Olivier Beretta had his rev limiter working very well, Jamie. No, his rev limiter was turned off behind the wheel of the number four Corvette, Olivier. Penalty, what did you think? Well, it's a tough race, and uh, the competition is very hard. The Corvette racing were doing well, we were fast. Uh, I get the penalty and honestly I didn't understand because he bumped me three times. It should have been the opposite way, but uh, this is the race, it's still long to go. It's just racing and a little bit unfair. All of the action in the GT class going on right now, how dirty is it out there? Sorry? How dirty is the racing? Well, no, the race is fantastic, I mean, very close competition, the Ferrari, the Porsche, the Corvette racing are very strong. And uh, it's just that the penalty uh, make our race very tough because now, uh, in especially in this little track, it's even more hard, so especially when it's unfair. But racing is like this, we are still pushing. Never give up and I hope uh, the Chevrolet will be good.
And that is the GM way. Never give up Olivier Beretta in pit lane right now. Well, I would have played you as radio traffic, but like I said, <laughs> he, he was well over the rev limiter there. He was a little, little spooled up. I should say, you know, it's kind of strange. Normally, when you get a blocking thing, they will give you a warning. They'll come to your crew chief and say, hey, tell your guy to quit blocking or we're going to do something. This is the first time I've seen that penalty given, but I bet you there's more to this story than what we know on what we've seen so far. We'd have to talk to Bob Barfield and say, uh, what was the reason? And we'll get that down the road sometime. And the other big thing is, Dorsey, you talk about in the opening of the show, if you hit pit lane here on the green flag racing, you're going to go down a lap. And that's exactly what has happened to the four car. The top four in GT are on their own lap they run fifth but they were lap down things have settled down somewhat right now as you look at the number 63 andy lally on board leading gt challenge so he's having a good run good to know that things have settled down a little bit you know when the series moves on to mid ohio for round number six don't miss its special website stream of qualifying presented by porsche on friday august the 6th series qualifying sessions so far have featured intense action so Catch all the action in this special qualifying stream presented by Porsche. That's americalamont.com. Friday, August the 6th. Lally having a good run, and we talked about the AJR cars. Two of them missing. That's going to certainly help them in the championship right now. Simon Pagino on a championship run as well. Thursday, primetime on speed is packed with three great original series. All new episode of Pigs All Out. Somebody here is going to win $10,000. From the Mega Track C Max Dragway. The toy stop on wheels. Dangerous drives. No, this isn't Disneyland up here. And from an all new episode of Battle of the Supercars. Yeah, he's in the it's a muscle car slugfest. Three great original series. One action packed night. Thursday night, beginning at 8 Eastern on speed. If you live for performance, upgrade to Castrol Edge Advanced Synthetic Oil. With eight times better wear protection than Mobile One, Castrol Edge, it's more than just oil, it's liquid engineering. Most people don't even think about their batteries until they're dead. That's why there's a Deltran battery tender. The battery tender plus charges your battery to 100%, then automatically maintains it, and they can double the life of your battery. For smaller spaces, grab a battery tender junior. It's lightweight, compact, and easy to use. You need to check out the battery tender waterproof 800. It's completely enclosed, so it's protected from moisture and vibration. Find the world's most advanced battery charger at batterytender.com. It started with two simple words, and now it's time to join in. Announcing the Claim Your Mazda Summer Sales Event. Enjoy the high resale value of Mazda 3, Mazda 6, the driver's alternative to camera, or the seven-passenger Mazda CX-9. All available with 0% APR financing for 60 months, plus no monthly payments until October 2010. So why compromise? Hurry in and claim your Mazda today. Feeling buried by all the piles of paper in your home or office? Maybe it's time you traded in the old filing cabinet for a new office assistant. Meet the Neat Desk Scanner and Organizer, the only scanner that actually thinks while it scans. With Neat Desk, all your important documents can be easily scanned and then organized with the NeatWorks software. So that shoebox full of receipts instantly becomes a manageable expense report. That stack of business cards can go directly into your computer's contact list. Virtually any piece of paper automatically becomes a searchable document that you can find with a simple keyword. And here's the best part. If you call or visit us at tryneat.com right now, you can use the Neat Desk or the amazing Neat Portable Scanner for 30 days absolutely free. That's right. You'll have one full month to enjoy a paper-free lifestyle absolutely free. That's how confident we are that you'll love your Neat Organizer. So give us a call or go to tryneat.com for your 30-day trial and say goodbye goodbye to all that paper. This Thursday on Speed, our primetime lineup is packed with great original series. At eight, pinks all out. It's all new as it goes four wide at the colossal mega track Z-Max Dragway. Then at nine, it's 70 miles of terror on dangerous drives. And at 10, it's a muscle car slugfest on all new Battle of the Supercars. That's Thursday at East 8 Eastern. You ride on board the number one, the Patron Highcroft entry, Simon Pagino behind the wheel. Round five of the American Le Mans series. 
Lime Rock Park through the uphill chicane and then down into the other chicane, what we call the West Bend chicane. And there's second place. Klaus Graf. This is significant, Brian, because Klaus Graf is behind the wheel, so Greg Pickett got the right amount of time in the car. Means that Klaus is going to do under the two-hour limit, and the car is really fast. His fastest lap is one-tenth better than Simon Pagano. He's 13 seconds behind, and he has fuel on board. Pagano does not. As you see Klaus Graf there, clip that tire bundle again going through the chicane. They're in great shape, strategy-wise. Yep, and I just checked in with the team. Klaus Graf is very pleased with the car right now. Team manager Jeff just told me Klaus is just behind the wheel. He's got his head down and he's beginning to do what he does best. But when I talked to Klaus earlier this morning, he said that the team has really kind of gone away from the strategy that they were taking when they first took delivery of this car. When they got the car, they also got Penske's data that came with the car. They're not really using that data anymore. They've decided we are Muscle Milk Team Side of Sport Racing. We're going to develop our own setups and we're really going on our own on this one. And so far, they've been really pleased with the results. Klaus Graf only 11 points behind Brabham and Pagano in the championship, but that is the 52. Tom Papadopoulos behind the wheel, the leader in the LMP Challenge category. At least he was the last time by. And as he flashes by, this time in timing and scoring still being shown there. This is at the uphill chicane. He's popped on the throttle a little bit too hard, gotten the dirty part of the race back. It is really slick through there. If you get offline, you see the other cars there, the GT machines online. He was way wide of that and immediately lost grip. No traction control, remember, on the challenge classes here in the American Le Mans series. Yeah, guys, I don't think Tom Papadopoulos lost the lead there in LMPC, but this team having a great weekend. Some of these LMPC teams have had difficulty with shifter problems this weekend, but these guys really smooth sailing. They had a great race back at Salt Lake City, but late in that race, Alex Figge had a very difficult time restarting the car, so they fell from second to third. This weekend, they're hoping things go much better on those pit stops, and maybe they can come away with a victory. These are paddle shift cars where you have a, a, a paddle on the right side of the steering wheel that gives you up shifts and one on the left side of the steering wheel that gives you down shifts. That's all run through the ECU. And some of these cars now starting to experience problems when they pull the upshift button that the transmission doesn't do what it's supposed to do. So um, a little quirky thing they're all working around trying to figure out. One thought yesterday was the amount of rain that we had. They said we merely needed maybe try and wrap these, uh, insulate them a little bit more. We believe we we're getting water into the system. Tell you what, you got to give the PR1 team that runs the 52 a lot of credit as they have run this year. They've run very well. Tom Papadopoulos ran the first two sprint races of the year and then sat out at Salt Lake City, so he is back on form. Looking at the 99, Elton Julian right there, having a good run, running second right now in the LMP Challenge category. And then Andy Wallace, a ways back from behind him. Wallace running in third right now. And remember, Wallace's co-driver is going to be Scott Tucker. That's big for the championship. Because right now, the 99 is in front of him on the racetrack, and that is good for Gunnar Jeanette. The 95 beginning to close down right there behind him. And he's doing exactly what he needs to do. He needs to keep that car out there. They have to score points here today, so he needs to keep it clean. Turn the car over to Scott Tucker. Scott did a great job in qualifying here yesterday, just a couple of seconds off the pole. We're on board with him there. There's the 54 Black Swan car. 54 leading the GTC category right now. Tucker and Bushu, 91 points coming in here, 11 over Gunnar Jeanette. Bushu is going to drop back a little bit because we chronicled his problems from the uh, practice this morning. So right now it's up to Andy Wallace to deliver a car to Scott Tucker so he can stay in this championship hunt. I don't know if Andy's got the straightaway speed. I don't know how much uh, setup that is. He's fighting the wheel a bit through that big bend there, Calvin. Now Julian beginning to close on the 48, the GTC entry of Bryce Miller. Miller running third in the GT Challenge category right now, and this will give you a good idea of the speed differential or the lack of speed differential between these two classes. Yeah, they all seem to hit about the same terminal speed, about 155 down the straightaways, but certainly much better braking, much better cornering with the LMP Challenge classes. I spoke to Elton Julian this weekend. He said, this is a baptism of fire. He said, I've never been to this racetrack before. I'm trying to learn it in the rain with something else, but he's immediately on the pace really has a lot of talent, this young man. Tell you what, Tom Papadopoulos, we talked about his spin. He had a lap on everybody. He's running about a second a lap slower, so probably different pit stop strategies, I would imagine. And we talked about that from the beginning of the show. If you're going to win an American Le Mans Series competition at Lime Rock Park, it's going to take speed on the part of the driver, speed on the part of the crew, and no mistakes and some good pit stop strategy. 
it sounds to me like that is what the 52 right now is doing. Bobby Orgel calling the shots there as Andy Wallace begins to close down on Elton Julian for the battle in the LMP Challenge category. Round five of the American Le Mans Series action from Lime Rock Park at Simon Pagano in his Patron Highcroft HPD out in front here in round five. And the problems for Corvette, they continue. Wednesday on Speed, our primetime lineup hits the gas. At eight, Stealth Rider is all new as Jason Britton takes on Philly. Then, Paints All Out rocks West Palm Beach, followed by an all new Intersections, where man and machine are pushed to the limit. Get your heart racing Wednesday at 8 Eastern, only on Speed. There's an old saying in racing. Start with the best street cars, and you end up with the best race cars. No wonder on any given weekend, more Mazdas are road raced than any other car. Mazda, race-driven engineering, the Zoom Zoom way. In today's cars, there's self-adjusting cylinders, self-deploying spoilers. Why not a self-cleaning engine? Next-generation Pennzoil motor oil cleans out up to 40% of sludge. So turn your engine into a self-cleaning engine and feel the clean. Hard left turn in 15 feet. Punch it. Dramatic right turn. Stop on the brakes. For drivers who want to get the most out of their cars, it's Bridgestone or nothing. You'll love what damp rib can do for your family. It immediately begins absorbing moisture throughout your home, creating fresher, healthier air and a more comfortable environment for your family. Damp Rid reduces humidity to a level where mold and mildew stains can't grow, eliminating musty odors and protecting against moisture damage. And when it's done, you just pour moisture down the drain. Create a more comfortable home with Damp Rid. Bidding on this highly desirable item begins at $2 million. Good thing's like three Two inches big. $2 million. $2.3 million, madam, thank you. I could buy a house with that amount. Or a yacht. Do I hear 2.7? house and a yacht. Three million dollars. Do I have three million dollars? Okay, that's a joke. Sold to the gentleman in the blue blazer. I can't believe this. You may not believe that, but you'll believe this. Gillette's new Fusion Pro Glide. Gillette's best shave or your money back. Go to YouTube and see where the young guns show up next. It's a nice frame. drivers, premier road courses, and cutting-edge technology. Born in France in 1923 with the first running of the 24 Hours of Le Mans, the American Le Mans series is the glory and the grueling reality of world-class sports car racing. Drivers from around the world strut their speed, skill, and endurance. Four separate classes racing on the track at the same time. It is the chain that connects the new and the faithful sports car fans of an extraordinary racing tradition. This is the American Le Mans series. In the battle at Lime Rock Park, now heating up in GT Challenge, and two of the best in the Porsches out there right now. Jerome Bleakmullen in the white and green 54 for Black Swan Racing, and then Andy Lally right behind him in the Porsche entry from TRG. This is going to be a sensational battle, which should go down to the checkered flag because both these guys got in the car second, so they'll probably finish this one out, and they're two of the best driving these Porsche race cars. GT Challenge there, the Corvette splitting them right now, but that battle will continue. You ride on board the 92 of Tommy Milner. That's in the upper left. That's the 45 Flying Lizard Porsche of Jörg Bergmeister right behind Milner, giving chase down the front straightaway. Looking out from behind the BMW, and look at Bergmeister closing the braking zone. 
He does. He was just right on his tail a lap before some traffic got in the way there. But meanwhile, in the GTC battle, that is getting really tight there. How much patience will Andy Lally have? Man, both of these are beginning to heat up right now. It's getting good in the GT battle, just a little bit in front of the GT Challenge battle. Two of the best in the business, I said, right there in the Porsches. And Lally really all over the back bumper of Jerome Bleakmullen in the white 54. But Bergmeister beginning to close pulling Tommy Milner closer and closer each lap into the chicane at West Bend. Bergmeister closing up. Yeah, about one more lap. And Bergmeister's going to be right on top of Milner. And these two Porsche drivers, no question, have a great deal of respect for each other. They know that they're the top of the game in their, in, in their respective divisions. Andy Lally, of course, we've seen him with TRG in everything, stock cars, all the Porsches. He's known for getting the job done. Here comes prototype traffic through. They slide by York Bergmeister in the upper left there and now beginning to close in on the back of the 92 of Tommy Milner, one of the LMP Challenge cars. And when you look at the battle for GTC, that's been split a bit by one of the extreme speed Ferraris. Chris? Well, listening to the drivers in that battle right now, BMW, Porsche, we got to remember that the Flying Lizard car did come in and pit uh, just a little bit ago. The BMWs have been out there a bit longer, and those BMWs are starting to loosen up. We know that they've got a little bit more air on the front of that car, so the team wasn't able to really dial in the back of the car, and those cars going a little bit loose right now. And remember the rules in American Law, very difficult to make an aero change because those, uh, those gurneys on the back of the car, they're bolted down, so pretty much with the BMW, have is what they're going to have at the finish. Watching that GTC battle, we see Jerome Bleckemolen leading Andy Lally right now, and this is exactly the kind of battle that Bleckemolen has been waiting for. He's been missing the uh, Super Cup rounds over in Europe this year. He's the reigning champion in Super Cup, but he said, nope, I'm not going to defend that championship right now. This is where I want to be. The GTC action right now, the best solid Porsche action anywhere in the world. And then you got Porsches battling it out both in GT and in GTC. Look at Bergmeister close on the back of Milner and obviously the Porsches in the GT Challenge. Oh, and a problem for the 0-2. It's Ed Brown behind the wheel. He Talk finished to. second here last year in GTC and actually did a test here on Tuesday. Felt very comfortable with the car and having a, the rain out yesterday felt he'd be good come race. Yeah, hey, this is a tough part of the racetrack, though, Dorsey. That's the slowest corner on the entire racetrack, that new uh, revised West Bend. Usually, when you get turned around there, somebody turned you. We'll take a look and see if that's the case. Now, yeah. got to the dirty stuff. Just dropped his wheels off, got up on top of the curb, and you saw it lose traction on the outside and just turned around. No help from anyone. Gets it back underway, but, you know, Scott Sharp has done such a great job in his extreme speed motorsports team driving and trying to manage it, as well as you saw the 0-2 come to pit road. Johannes Van Overbeck behind the wheel of the 0-1 right now. You saw it flash by in sixth in GT. This car has the E85 motor in it this week. It didn't have it at Millis, and this is the first time they're using it in race trim. And this team is really learning the ropes here in GT racing. They didn't have a particularly good car to start the race at Miller, but when they went to the medium compound Michelin tires in the middle of the race there a couple of weeks ago, the year one car came alive with the fastest lap of the race. So. Very tough. Steve Chalice, the engineer on the squad here, he has not been to Lime Rock with any race car before, so this is certainly a stern challenge with the rain yesterday and a first day being dry, being race day. And what Calvin's talking about with the E85 motor, that's the E85 ethanol fuel. If you can't just put it in there. You have to make a, uh, some adaptation to the motor, change it around, and this, they didn't have two of them. Now they've got one in each car, and it's more performance. Fuel cell, fuel lines, all of that kind of stuff, and that's just more work for Scott Sharp and his team. Talk about what a great job Scott Sharp has done, not only in the car, but out. He is building a program here at Extreme Speed Motorsports. He's doing it with the help of Ed Brown. It's been such a blessing in my life, uh, meeting Ed six years ago, getting him in, interested in the driving side of racing. He's always a, a car guy, a motorsports guy, but to actually uh, talk him into starting to race a few years ago and, and to really spend a lot of time working with him and teaching him, you know, he has everything in Ed's life. He wants to do it now and he wants to do it in a big way now. So that means you don't just go easy, you do a crash course. And that's literally what we've done. So it's been a very aggressive last few years of testing as much as we can. Uh, practicing everywhere we go, working together, looking at the data. You know, he's in three years moved to I think what probably most people would spend 10 years doing. We got a little wide. Oh, yeah. and he was just saying we got wide a couple times, just like about his foot offline. And really the way I think that uh, Tequila Patron activates 
and um, I think they set the benchmark for that, of taking a property like the ALMS and, and how do we maximize our, our return from that. So not only just uh, my best friend, but just a, a great source of, uh, it's fun to be able to do this stuff together and, and to see him excel. Right on more than zero one right now. Johannes Van Overbeck behind the wheel. Scott Sharp was in, his, in that car earlier, and we talked about what a great job this team has done with the help of Ed Brown. He just climbed out of the zero two, and Jamie is there. He's got a little bit of help pulling off right now. Ed Brown, torturous conditions on the track right now. You look exhausted. What happened? It's just, you know, we decided to keep me out a little bit longer, and the last 15 minutes just became so hot in the car. It's really hard to focus, but uh, I got my stint done. That's all that counts. There's a lot of traffic, a lot of bumping going on. First time at Lime Rock Park. How was it? Uh, you know, I raced in the Porsches last year. Uh, these are a lot funner to drive than the Porsches. Good job. That's a big stint for him. Around 15 minutes plus, that is a lot of time in one of these cookers, Dorsey. One thing about this racetrack, the straightaway is so short here, and there's only the one that you never get a chance to rest. There's nowhere you can catch your breath because of the traffic around here, because of how many corners there are, and it's a fast racetrack. You're really, really gritting your teeth all the way around here, so there's no rest, and this place used to beat me up the worst of any track. I mean, this is a physically tough place. Guy Cosmo behind the wheel of the 0-2 right now. The team has a lot of belief in Guy Cosmo, and he's really helping Ed Brown with his driving as well. But with the series moving on to Mid-Ohio next in early August, don't miss its special web stream of the entire race on AmericanLamar.com, sponsored by Falcon Tire. On Saturday, August the 7th, catch all the action in this special race stream, along with commentary from ALMS Radio and timing and scoring information, all brought to you by Falcon Tire. Log on to American Lamar. Com. Right now from Lime Rock Park, round five, Simon Pagino who stays in front. Sunday, NASCAR Race Day invades Indianapolis, and we're there. As David Ruderman, Clint Boyer, and two-time Brickyard winner Jimmy Johnson join us live. We'll look back at Jeff Gordon's dominance at Indy and break down the revived feud between Carl Edwards and Brad Keselowski. Plus, Kenny Waller shows you a side of the Brickyard you've never seen before. NASCAR Race Day built by the Home Depot live from Indianapolis Sunday at 10 Eastern. And kiss the bricks at 8 Eastern with NASCAR Victory Lane fueled by Sunoco. Only on speed. for the inside track on affordable auto and other types of insurance, ride with the general. We can help you cut the cost of insurance with a down payment as low as $59 and a low monthly payment that will take the pressure off your budget. Log on to thegeneral.com now for an instant quote and immediate proof of insurance. Don't end up with a loser, ride with a winner. The best car insurance rates online. Go to the general and save some time. Once there was a sad stretch of road where drivers just couldn't stop in time. But along came the Michelin man who reminded them the right tire changes everything. With better tires in place, that sad stretch of road wasn't so sad anymore. Michelin Hydro Edge tires stop up to 14 feet shorter. Michelin, a better way forward. Attention collectors, Ford has just authorized the National Motor Museum Mint to release this exclusive die-cast replica of the 1948 Ford F1 pickup. The first in the F-series of trucks that became the best-selling vehicles in the world. It has amazing details and parts that move. A regular $30 value, now yours for only $10. Plus, as a free gift, you'll also receive this precision die-cast 1956 Ford F100 pickup. According to many, the best looking Ford pickup ever built. Another $30 value, it's yours free, just for shipping and handling. Don't miss this unique collector's opportunity. Two of the most popular Ford trucks ever, both with certificates of authenticity. A $60 value for the special price of only $10 plus shipping and handling. 
Don't delay. To order your Ford pickups, have your credit card ready and call 1-800-217-3536. That's 1-800-217-3536. Don't wait. Call now. Speed's coverage of the American Le Mans Series is brought to you by the 2011 Jaguar XJ, the stunning result of taking a very different road. Here at Lime Rock Park, the fans on the hillside enjoying the weather and enjoying American Le Mans Series competition. Klaus Graf really closing down on Simon Pagino now. LMP Challenge battle is heating up, as is GT Challenge. It's a good one here. The fans have come to see a race, and they certainly have one. We talk about tire technology and what it means to go fast here at Lime Rock Park. Jamie has more. Well, right now, those fans on the hill, they're enjoying the hot and dry conditions here at Lime Rock Park. But earlier in the weekend, in practice and qualifying, as we mentioned, it was nothing but pouring rain. And that pouring rain poses a huge problem for the tire manufacturers, specifically. At the 24 Hours of Le Mans, Michelin had three different wet tire options for the slight wet or drying conditions, intermediate for light rain, and then the full wets for the heavy wet conditions. But the differences are in the tread pattern, the compound, the number, and the shape of the grooves. Here in the American Le Mans series, though, tire manufacturers are limited to only one set of wet tires for each car. Michelin chose the heavy wet tire options to provide teams with the maximum available grip. So the track, so when the track was wet and it was staying wet, Michelin teams had a real advantage. But two things at the end are enemies of the tires in the wet. One, standing water, especially the deep puddles. We saw some of those on track early this morning in the morning warm-up session and the extended caution periods, just like that red flag that came out in the GT qualifying because then the tires cooled below their best operating temperature range. But Michelin doing everything that they can to make sure that the car and the tire have the proper setup no matter what the track conditions offer. I'll tell you what the track conditions offer right now is dry racing and it is heating up big time. That is the battle for the lead right there. Klaus Graf after taking over the number six the Porsche RS Spider from Greg Pickett. He has been on a charge. He has been reeling in Simon Pagano and he's caught him. He has and Simon Pagano just one lap ago said his fastest lap of the race. Well guess what? Graf is quicker by two tenths, and he has 40 more laps of fuel on board. The high crop boys got to work some magic, magic here. They need a break with a yellow or something. So I think they're still going to need two stops today. Graf will only need one. That is big. Dorsey talked about it in the beginning of the show. If you end up having to stop under green flag conditions here, you will go a lap down if you do a full stop, that's for sure. Graf looking, they've got traffic in front, and that is a LMP challenge battle right there. Side by side, Andy Wallace, I believe, with Elton Julian. No, that's the 30. Is that the 36? That's it the is. 36. So that's the team car. So he is down a bit. So Andy Wallace not fighting with that car. But right now, Simon Pagano has his hands full. 36 and the 99 look exactly the same. They do. You can really only differentiate the two cars by the driver's helmets. The black helmets are in the 36. But Pagano is doing a great job, Doss. You could see him there just managing the traffic. He wasn't going right into the gearbox of those LMP Challenge cars. He backed it up a little bit. He kind of stalled Klaus Graf right there. And then he took off to try and time the move. And that's what you've got to do here. You've got to play that political chess game. You've got to stack up everybody behind you and get yourself in clear racing space so you don't get held up. On the other side of that coin is they should be talking to Klaus Graf and saying, buddy, you are sitting pretty. You're faster than he is, and you've got a full pit stop less to do than him more than likely. Right now, Pagano finding his way through traffic a little bit better than Klaus Graf, but the aerodynamics of that Porsche RS Spider so good, you saw him flash around the GT car coming into the downhill, and Klaus Graf has now closed it right back up. It's where it was last lap. Brian, I just checked in with Duncan Dayton on the Highcroft machine, and he said they've been saving fuel this entire race. He said they're only going to have to come to pit one time. So when they come in and put David Brabham behind the wheel, that's the only stop they'll have to make. Well, that is huge. I mean, they are really stretching their mileage. I spoke to Robin Hill, the team manager, this morning. He said, ah, oh, 57, 58 minutes green. They're trying to stretch this. I know we're seeing a lot of caution, but, you know, he's an hour and 25 into this race. got an hour and 20 to go. I've got a feeling he's got to pit here pretty soon. The next 5 to 10 is still going to be a long run if it stays green. One other major factor will be that when David Brabham gets in there, he's going to be totally fresh, whereas Klaus Graf has got to carry this car the whole way to the finish on his own. And it's hot outside, boys. You know, that was interesting. Through the downhill that time, it looked like Graf lost distance to Pagano, and that's where the car had been strong earlier. This is where... Klaus really seems to close the gap. Remember qualifying yesterday. This is the segment of the racetrack where Klaus Graf had the problems. 
We've talked about softening up the rear suspension settings on this Porsche Spider. It was really sliding around, as we saw with the uh, video of Klaus's qualifying attempt here yesterday at the beginning of the show. The car was really stiff at the back end. They didn't make a big change for the wet setup. But even in the dry this morning, Greg Pickett told me, he said, I think we're still a little bit too stiff. The engineers are thinking about softening it up. Half a second at the line the last time by, this time 1.3. So Pagano seems to have found a little bit more pace. Either that or traffic really beginning to play. Perhaps the tires going away on the oh. six car and Grop up to the outside. And that is the 36 again that they're having to work around. And all he did right there in making a pass on a slower car was give the car extra room. But in doing so, dropped his tires into the dirty area, the spent rubber area of the racetrack, and the car refused to turn at the exit of that corner. He dropped the wheels right off. Christian Zugel behind the wheel of the 36 right now. We typically see him partnered with Gunnar Jeanette, and that's why those cars painted identical. He is sharing the car with Tim Sedeby this time, Tom Sedeby, I should say, this weekend, and Elton Julian. Gunnar Jeanette in the 99. Pretty good story there. Christian Zugel did not intend to race here this weekend, so they committed to Elton Julian in the 99 car alongside Gunnar Jeanette. Then Christian said, you know what? I can make it. Spoke to Kevin Jeanette. He, Kevin said, we can't just take Elton out of the car. We made a commitment to him. I can try and find you another ride. He spoke to Jeno and Tom Knapp. They wanted to run. It was the perfect match. We, I think we may see more of that combination running this year, which is great. We understand the 99 just took the lead in LMPC. There is the 99 as well. Elton Julian right there in front of Simon Pagano. Tell from the exterior, the prototypes look very much the same. Just a difference in the technology involved in them. A little less technology in the LMP Challenge car, which makes it somewhat more affordable to run, but still a very, very nice car to drive. And Elton Julian doing a great job taking the 99 to the front. That has championship implications once again for Scott Tucker certainly does and you can see what traffic can do to you we saw graph all over the tail of simon pagino and right now he's dropped about five seconds just by being stuck with that gt and lmpc traffic jamie well, the 95 car is on pit road scott tucker getting strapped in behind the wheel right now these pit stops take a little bit longer than the other prototype classes that we're used to different set of pit lane rules scott tucker still getting strapped in still going into the car doesn't look like they're going to take time fire it up, fire it up. that's where they time in pit lane compared to the other prototypes is in the tires but they did not take tires right now he's just trying to get the car fired up lights are on and he is underway earlier in the season they had to do a mandatory four tire change during one of these events for the sprint race they've decided not to do that really saves everyone budget the tires the michelin tires are excellent and the reason the tire changes take so long is because with the challenge classes dorsey you're only allowed two wheel guns Excuse me, one wheel gun. Well, Tucker just left pit lane and goes through turns one and two, and Gunner, or Elton Julian, I should say, in the 99, just dove into one. So it'll be interesting to see if Elton Julian can hunt down that car and put it a lap down. That'll be very interesting to see. And if so, that'll make it even harder for Scott Tucker to try to challenge for that win. But we know the 99 will have to be pitting oh, soon look at as this. well. That's wow. the leader. Look at Pagano get all crossed up and locked up, going into the uphill. And there's a, actually they're working through, through the lead in GT right now. Uh, he is, and here comes Klaus Graf trying to get through too. And I think that is the most challenging portion of the racetrack for these drivers. It is narrow. No name straight is not straight. Oh, look at that! <laughs> that wow, was a what nose. shot. <laughs> wow, that was Tommy Milner's onboard camera and Klaus Graf right there on the rear bumper of the 92 BMW as they flash through the to the downhill. Graf takes it to the inside trying to set sail again for Pagano, but Pagano has now pulled out uh, 2.7 seconds. Guys, the 95, we heard on the radio, watch your speed, watch your speed. Didn't watch it close enough. Pit lane speed limit violation, stop and go penalty. That will cost him the lap for sure because Elton Julian just comes flashing by the front straightaway. There you'll see him right there, the green prototype that flashed by, that was it. So Scott Tucker's day, not so good right now, but we still have a long way to go from Lime Rock Park. It's Simon Pagano who continues to lead here, but Klaus Graf not letting go of the back of that HPD entry from Patron Highcroft High Racing. We'll be back to Lime Rock Park for more of round five of the 2010 American Le Mans Series.
This is unlike any car you've ever seen before. This is power with efficiency. This is an interior that exceeds even the promise of the exterior. This is the all-new Jaguar XJ, the stunning result of taking a very different road. Every 2011 Jaguar includes best-in-class Jaguar Platinum coverage with complimentary scheduled maintenance and no-cost replacement of wear and tear items. Most people don't even think about their batteries until they're dead. That's why there's a Deltran battery tender. The Battery Tender Plus charges your battery to 100%, then automatically maintains it, and they can double the life of your battery. For smaller spaces, grab a Battery Tender Junior. It's lightweight, compact, and easy to use. You need to check out the Battery Tender Waterproof 800. It's completely enclosed, so it's protected from moisture and vibration. Find the world's most advanced battery charger at BatteryTender.com. It's like a blast of hydration to your face. New Schick Hydro, with water-activated gel that hydrates your skin as you shave and lasts up to twice as long as ordinary strips, while five blades with skin guards smooth the skin to reduce irritation. It's the best shave for your skin. The new Schick Hydro, for your skin. If you have a collector car, call Haggerty. When it's insured with our agreed value policy, one of the benefits is our in-house claims department. We have an 800 number to India, and it's free. At Haggerty, you only work with specialists. We even have a team member whose only job is tracking down the perfect replacement part. Call now and be placed on hold immediately. <laughs> Want to touch up your car's shine, but don't have time to wax? <clears throat> Get the shine that sticks. Whoa. New Finish Cling Spray Car Polish. Simply spray on this unique no-drip formula and just wipe off to give your car a brilliant shine in minutes. Cling doesn't run like those watered-down sprays and lasts three times longer. So get new finish Cling, the shine that sticks. Available at Advance Auto, Target, Kmart, Walgreens, AutoZone, Walmart, and other leading stores. Upgrade to Castrol Edge Advanced Synthetic Oil. With eight times better wear protection than Mobile One, Castrol Edge. It's more than just oil, it's liquid engineering. Back at Lime Rock Park for round five of the American Le Mans series. On track right now. See the Corvette streaming through the left hander. We're having a bit of a technical issue, so we're going to be right back to Lime Rock Park. And more American Le Mans Series action. Simon Pagino still out in front. Make sure you join us when we come back. Thursday, prime time on Speed is packed with three great original series. All new episode of Pink's All Out. Somebody here is going to win $10,000. From the Mega Track C Max Dragway. The Twist Stop All Wheels. Dangerous Drives. No, this isn't Disneyland up here. And from an all new episode of Battle of the Supercars. It's a muscle car slugfest. Three great original series. One action at night. Thursday night, beginning at 8 Eastern on Speed. During the Honda clearance event, you can save on any Civic, the most durable, longest lasting car in its class. Get 0.9% financing for up to 60 months for well-qualified buyers. It's called the knock! In today's cars, there's self-adjusting cylinders, self-deploying spoilers. Why not a self-cleaning engine? Next generation Pennzoil motor oil cleans out up to 40% of sludge. So turn your engine into a self-cleaning engine and feel the clean. Macy, I can't let you drive the old Aaron's Dream Machine. It's too dangerous. Please? Honey, your feet won't even reach the pedals. Oh, Daddy, I love you. Well, focus. Uh, you're only 11. You don't have a license. But I have my own suit. Boy, you sound an awful lot like ODW. Your dad let you drive. 
Name brand furniture, electronics, appliances, and computers are all here at Aaron's. You don't need credit to buy or lease at Aaron's guaranteed low price. Nobody beats Aaron's. We're still going for ice cream, right, honey? How do you turn one box of Honey Nut Cheerios cereal into a free year supply? Be one of thousands to win free Honey Nut Cheerios for an entire year. Its great taste helps make lowering cholesterol a non-challenge. Just see specially marked boxes for details. Feeling buried by all the piles of paper in your home or office? Maybe it's time you traded in the old filing cabinet for a new office assistant. Meet the Neat Desk Scanner and Organizer, the only scanner that actually thinks while it scans. With Neat Desk, all your important documents can be easily scanned and then organized with the NeatWork software. So that shoebox full of receipts instantly becomes a manageable expense report. That stack of business cards can go directly into your computer's contact list. Virtually any piece of paper automatically becomes a searchable document that you can find with a simple keyword. And here's the best part. If you call or visit us at tryneat.com right now, you can use the Neat Desk or the amazing Neat Portable Scanner for 30 days absolutely free. That's right. You'll have one full month to enjoy a paper-free lifestyle absolutely free. That's how confident we are that you'll love your Neat Organizer. So give us a call or go to tryneat.com for your 30-day trial and say goodbye to all that paper. In Lime Rock Park, Simon Pagano has brought the one HPD Acura High Croft Entry, Patron High Croft Entry, I should say, on to pit road for their stop. Significant here, it looks like they are gonna take tires. This will be a graphic illustration of what a green flag stop does to you here in this racetrack. Very short lap, we'll have to look for Graf. He was right on his tail when Pagano hit pit lane, Graf behind the wheel now. Four tire change, four fresh Michelins, 90 liters of fuel. And there went Graf, I believe. I think Graf just put it right down. That would be correct, Calvin, as a matter of fact. If you didn't make a green flag pit stop without going around that, you would need at least 20 seconds in hand. And we knew that the two cars were running nose to tail, so now, with new tires, it's going to take a lap to get up to speed, at least. And uh, uh, he's a lap down anyway at this point. The key is now, Graf is going to need fuel. We believe Highcroft might be able to stretch it. Now and eight to go on this fuel load will be a long way, but they can possibly stretch it. Graf will definitely need fuel. The key is, his stop will be a time fuel load. He will not need a full tank to get to the checkered flag. That is going to be the key here today, how long they spend on pit lane. Yeah, Calvin, that car, they have options. They could come in right now and get to the end, but they could also go to about lap 125. So they can uh, pick their time when they want to come to pit lane. I think the big question is when they come in, they're not going to have to take as much fuel as the Highcroft car, and will they take tires? I know they tried to do uh, new tires on just the left side this weekend, but Klaus Graf saying that the car was very twitchy under braking. So if they take tires, I think they're going to have to take four. I think the key is, Chris, they have a lap lead. If I was those guys, I would stay out, except there's a yellow. Yes, pit lane will be closed, but they are on their own lap. Even when they pit, they'll still keep the lead. So that will be the call. Do you take tires? Ideally, they'd like to do it under caution because they're going to, you know, basically lose track position only, but still have the lead of the race. Wow, look at this traffic jam right there. You see the BMW and the Porsche fighting, then Klaus Graf, the prototype right in front. It's Tom Papadopoulos, the leader in the LMP Challenge category, and look at Bergmeister trying to go inside Tommy Milner. Three different leads right there, and there you go. Bergmeister takes it. Three different battles, three different leaders, I should say. Bergmeister now to the front in GT. The longer... This goes, as far as Klaus Graf goes, the least time he'll have to take to get uh, fuel. That was actually the pass for second in GT. The two BMWs, of course, look just alike. But Bergmeister has been running down the two BMWs, and in traffic now has split them. My bad, boys. Didn't look at the red and the blue on the windscreen of the BMWs. My bad. Bergmeister, though, moving towards the front. Tommy Milner in front. About 4.2 seconds to Milner, the six in traffic. Who's coming in? Here he goes. Who's coming in? I wouldn't have called it that way, Calvin, either. Yeah, well, they're going to be in good shape, but, um, you know, I think they had a lot of options to them. Maybe Chris is making the call there. Maybe he's running out of rubber a little bit. Let's see what he does. Essentially, if his pit stop mimics his, that being passionate for tires, the fuel stop is going to be the key. How long will they have that fuel hose connected, Chris? 
Yeah, it's going to be connected much shorter than the high croft car. So they're putting fuel in the car. They've got fresh Michelins out. So I'm assuming they're going to go four Michelins, four corners of that car. Also, the BMW car also in pit lane. Billy Arbelin getting behind the wheel in the Ray Hall car. Everything uh, look, uh, done with fuel on the Porsche down here. The six car, the muscle mount car up in the air right now. Just getting the tires on the car and looking down the front straightaway, looking for David Brabham. Don't see him coming down the downhill yet. So uh, these guys might be able to maintain the lead. Slide the lane there on the left rear for Klaus Graf. So Jeff Carter and the boys make the call. I would have actually connected that hose and timed it with a tire stop. You're not going to lose any further time. That'd give you a little bit more fuel. Could run it a bit richer, but they obviously have their calculations. So Klaus Graf gets the lead with that time fail. Maintains it, and that is big news. Big news in GT was that Jörg Bergmeister did indeed take over the GT lead. Action is about 14 seconds ahead of us. 14 seconds ahead of us. This is your car, buddy. Let's go get him. Remember, Pagano has hot tires. Graf has got to get some temp and pressure into these. So this could be the critical phase of the race. What can Pagano do here in the next couple of laps? I like that. Here's, there's your carrot, buddy. Go and get it. I loved it when they told me that. So Milner dove to pit road. Bill Arbelin has taken over there. Grab him in the car, in the one, trying to give chase to Klaus Graf. And you guys talked about it. At the end of the race, you're going to have a fresher David Brabham than Klaus Graf. But a lot of people seem to think that these open cockpit cars get a lot of fresh air in them. We all know that's not the case. It actually is a low-pressure area in the cockpit. It draws the air out of the cockpit. So Klaus Graf working hard on a very hot and humid day in Connecticut. There's the gap. There's David Brabham. I got excited. Of course, Brabham has taken over the wheel of the Patron car. We saw Klaus Graf going through turn one as Brad was just coming up this long front straightaway. So he's got the hammer down. He's got to get it. Remember, these guys are lapping in 49 seconds, 50 seconds. So they're working really hard. They're working out inside that race car. It's hot outside, and uh, there's nowhere to get room for Brad. So, I mean, they're going to work now. It's up to David Brabham to work to chase down Klaus Graf, but it was Simon Pagano who ran from the drop of the green. What a great stint he had, Chris. Yeah, and he led most of that stint. Simon, right now, you guys are about 10 seconds back. Is David going to be able to track down that muscle melt car? Well, it's David Brabham, right? <laughs> Uh, I think he can. I mean, uh, the car is not very easy to drive with the low downforce kit we have on the cars in Salt Lake City. We're trying to compensate the roofs, it's a little bit difficult for us uh, compared to a Citrus Sport uh, car, which has a little bit less weight and uh, more downforce. But uh, I mean, the team is doing, doing a great job uh, to set the car up, uh, not knowing that this package over here. And uh, if there's someone that can do it, for, it's for sure David. So I'm pretty confident. Well, Simon was telling me earlier that the car has been a little bit of a handful down in turn one and two because of that lower downforce. Actually, about 8% less downforce on the back end of that car. 45 cars come on a pit road. He to overtook the GT lead. Also doing a timed fuel stop here. Going to put on four new Michelin tires as well. York Bergmeister climbed out of the car. Patrick Long now turning the wheel. Pat told me earlier that we got going out there to fight this weekend. It's about me. Aggressive. We're at that stage in the championship where we have to go and get it. However, with the 62 car out of the race right now, he might try and be a little more conservative and just make it to the end. Well, certainly Patrick Long earlier wasn't being conservative. Were you surprised to see him switch back to do the double driver change yeah, there? Yeah, I mean, I don't sure, sure if Ferg must have had a problem there, but certainly it's a very hot and humid day. Here's the BMW, so that was a good call by the Flying Lizard boys and a very efficient pit stop. That was masterful and clinical. Still P1, Jurg. You're still P1. That was the 45 crew talking to Patrick Long. It sounded like one of their crewmen, but it's Mika Salo that timing and scoring is showing in the lead in GT right now. Klaus Graf, though, up front. Simon Pagenaud, you talk about how well he drove today. What about how well he's been driving as of lately? He's won the last four races that he started. He has one over in Europe, Spa, and of course he did. You know, he was supposed to have another one in that win column at Le Mans. We call it the last four races he started because he did not get behind the wheel of that Peugeot that suffered suspension damage with Pedro Lamy behind the wheel early in the going at Le Mans. But what a streak he is on. It's going to be tough today, though, to keep that win streak going. See you what, Simon Pagano has certainly made a name for himself here over the last couple of years. Jörg Bergmeister saying, yeah, it is hot and it is humid. That's why we did that driver change. And Klaus Graf give the Muscle Milk team yet another victory. Remember, they won the P2 category for 12 hours of Sebring. Those guys found a way to cool off. They're fishing. These guys, hey, they're hot. Just like the competition here at Lime Rock Park. Wednesday. On speed.
Our primetime lineup hits the gas. At 8, Stealth Rider is all new as Jason Britton takes on Philly. Then, Paints All Out rocks West Palm Beach. Followed by an all new Intersections, where man and machine are pushed to the limit. Get your heart racing Wednesday at 8 Eastern, only on Speed. Most luxury automobiles simply use oil in their suspensions. But this is what we use, a fluid that reacts instantly and precisely to an electromagnetic charge for greater control and more responsive handling. The active damper system, available in the Acura ZDX. The most innovative thinking you'll find, you'll find in an Acura. This was a good idea. This was a great idea. Can you believe some guys have never tried Mike's hard lemonade because they've seen women drink it? <laughs> we don't have those kinds of issues. <laughs> Thank you. No, we don't. Don't forget the mics. Lemonade for grown-ups. The Discovery Channel dropped seven volunteers into a condemned town. Oh, God. Alone. Where am I? They were told there was a biological disaster. There's nothing we can do! Told to rebuild. We die together, we live together. Told to restart. I trust my fellow colonists with my life. We all fought valiantly. And we have fire! If society fell apart, would you? The colony. At Mothers, we come up with innovative solutions to common car care problems, like yellow clouded headlights. They're unsightly, and the reduced light output is a serious safety concern. Mothers Powerball for Lights is a revolutionary product. Restoring headlight clarity may seem complicated, but it's not. Powerball for Lights is quick, inexpensive, and easy to use, even on severely damaged headlights. Restore, maintain, and protect. Mothers Powerball for Lights Headlight Restoration Kit. There was a town held captive by an evil gas pump. It fed on people's hard-earned money. But along came the Michelin Man, who reminded them the right tire changes everything. And with fuel-efficient tires in place, that evil gas pump wasn't so evil anymore. Michelin Energy Saver AS tires can help save up to 109 gallons of fuel. Michelin, a better way forward. Thursday night on speed, it's a muscle car slugfest and an all-new battle of the supercars. Formula Drift champion Tanner Faust and open wheel champ Paul Tracy do get out in supercharged Mustang GT500 and a turbocharged Camaro. Battle of the supercars, Thursday night, 10 Eastern, only on speed. With those two boys and those two cars, they may tear some stuff up. Well, this is a great battle here. The two BMWs now, Billy Orblin running third in class, Joey Hand right behind him. Remember, these two guys were teammates last year in this very same team. They got split up, really just changed things around for this year, really tried to energize the driver lineup. It has worked. They've been running very, very strong. Tom Papadopoulos, their leader in the LMP Challenge, 